Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In this video today we're going to um, review the concept of renewable and non-renewable resources. Okay, so this is a concept you've been you've met a few times over the last um, few lessons or the few different activities that you've done. And we're just going to spend a bit of time kind of filling in a few gaps or just kind of making sure everyone's on the same page here. Okay, so we're thinking in within our topic of Earth's resources, we're thinking about um, <clears throat> the fact that the things, the resources that we use um, that come from the Earth, that are, or, you know, or, or even other ones, that we can kind of put into one of these two categories. So, but let's start by actually kind of defining what we mean by something being renewable versus then something that's non-renewable. Okay, so essentially um, that something that is renewable um, is never going to run out or can be replaced or maybe we could say regenerated in a short time frame. Okay, perhaps there's a, there's a slightly more um, detailed kind of way to look at it. This, this idea that <clears throat> that it's perhaps it's something that's that's never going to run out, um, or that it's something that when we use it, that it's able to be replaced or regenerated, kind of making new lots of it in a short or a practical kind of time frame. I might even you know add that here. As far as it's not going to take a, a billion years to make more of it. That it's you know maybe it might be a couple of years or maybe less than you know that that sort of time. Okay, and then so essentially, um, non-renewable resources are the opposite of that. That are they are resources that are going to run out, to run out eventually. Now, depending on how much we use or how much we need for the, what we do with it, you know that might be in, in a short time frame. It might be in a long time frame, <coughs> but it's going to run out eventually. Okay, that is we would say it's finite, okay, which is the opposite of infinite. Um, so it's a finite resource. It's, we only have a limited amount of it. Um, once we once we dig it out of the ground, once we've used up all that's there, that's it. <coughs> we can't go back and make more. We can't sit around for more to get produced. Um, if it's something that, that does get produced over time, um, that it's, yes, yeah, so it's a limited amount, or that it would... Um, uh, not uh, re renewed in a practical time frame. Okay, so you know, so different substances like coal, for example, um, are, will form naturally over time, but they form over a very, very, very long period, thousands and thousands of years, or millions of years. And so, um, you know, if if we want more to get made, we can't exactly kind of sit around and wait that long. That, that's not going to work. <coughs> so substance like that, we would consider to be non-renewable. All right, so let's go through and list off some examples of what we might consider in, in each of these kind of categories. Okay, so I want you to set up a table that looks like this in the notes that you're taking. Okay, so you column for each, and then we're going to list off a few. Okay, so things that are renewable. Things like wood. Um, water is a renewable resource. Okay, uh, carbon dioxide is a new renewable resource. Um, now, whether it should be included on a list like this is is a bit debatable. As far as um, we don't necessarily use carbon dioxide from from the environment for things like that, but it would be considered renewable. Okay, so energy that comes from the sun is renewable. Um, so solar energy. Um, perhaps we might look at wind and wind power or wind ways of generating electricity with wind. Um, things like the tides are a renewable resource as far as just the movement of water from one place to another. Okay, we've also got other things like um, um, so what we might call like natural kind of fibers. You know, maybe say like cotton or wool or hemp, okay, things that come from plants, or that things that come from animals, that will, you know, that we can make new animals, and you know, that they can, you know, sheep can regrow their, their, their coats, 
well, you know, that, that, that when the, the wool is kind of taken off, that it will regrow. You know, the different fibres that we get from plants, we can regrow and so that we can reuse those. <clears throat> now, thinking about things that are non-renewable. Okay, so some big kind of ones like coal, natural gas, uh, oil. Okay, they're all things that we would call fossil fuels. Okay, we'll go through that in a bit more detail in a future video as far as why we give them that name. Uh, we were also talking about things like uranium um, or other metals like iron and gold, silver, etc. Okay, you know, maybe iron or, or copper or other kind of metals that we, we use for all sorts of different things. Okay, so they're all things that we would um, dig out of the ground um, that we can't renew or we can't make more of. Um, you know, we can't make more of these, um, and we can't, um, you know, these these are, are substances that, that originally resulted from living things um, many, many years ago. <clears throat> okay, and so they're not things that we that, that more will be made um, in a time frame that we can use. Okay, and so what I want you to do for me um, now is I want you to look at this list and see what you can add. Um, see if you can add two more things to each side. Two more examples of renewable and non-renewable resources to help complete the list. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.